Mike here. Um, Doing a little bit of work on the refrigeration apparatus here. You can see it's all tore apart. Have the ebulator all uh, removed from the system and turned over. Um, you can see uh, this is where the throttling valve from the previous videos, um, uh, where I demonstrate how I can adjust it. It actually uh, injects right after this valve here, after it passes through the central column and dumps some heat, comes out the bottom, goes through the throttling valve. The reason I have it pulled off and the whole uh, system tore apart is I wanted some better um, temperature readings. Um, you see that light region there, that's where a thermocouple was um, taped close to the surface there. Um, I don't trust the readings. Um, the response time isn't great. So I decided I wanted to put thermocouples directly into um, into the refrigerant stream. So if you can see this um, this T right here, this brass T, the thermocouple tip, the junction, um, just kind of floats right directly in, almost in the center of the uh, horizontal portion. And uh, that one right there will probably, well, it'll be on the high side, it's quarter inch. Um, but I need three of them, two at a minimum. Um, and I also need a three-eighths one. So it's a little bit of trouble trying to uh, trying to get these to work. Um, see we're holding over 310 PSI. It's been like that for a couple hours, so I think this was a success. Um, the first two I did were not success. Uh, you can see that um, what I did was I made a, a short stub out of a quarter-inch copper. Um, I flared both ends, but only put a, a nut on one end so I could... Uh, um, fix it to the fitting, to the, the T. Uh, the other end I flared only to make uh, uh, putting a little bit of epoxy in there a little bit easier. Now I did some mechanical crimping to make a more con uh, mechanical um, uh, adhesion for the epoxy plug that's in there. And um, I found out, I suspected this might happen, but see this wiring here, it's uh, got this fiberglass shielding on it. And uh, once I sealed the first one up and tried to pressure test it, it pushed gas right through that shielding and leaked. So, you can see this ridiculous looking large uh, mass of epoxy. Um, what I had to do, I don't know if you can really make it out in there, but um, I actually had to shave, hey, you can see it in there, I had to shave the uh, fiberglass shielding away and exposing just the bare wires heading to the thermocouple junction. And, uh, and in order to um, stop communication between the fiberglass on the bottom and the fiberglass on the top. Um, and uh, what I did was, after I failed on the first one, I tried to rewrap it with a piece of hose like this and then fill the whole thing up. And uh, it didn't work exactly, probably because I got a little too uh, uh, impatient and tried to pressure test it before it was fully cured. Um, this one here that I made, I let that thing cure for a full 12 hours. Uh, did it in one large pour rather than like these had been messed around with and recoded a few times. Um, now that I've seen this one here is actually held, I'm going, I, I went ahead and uh, just gobbed some epoxy on these things. I'm going to let them cure for uh, about a day or so and try to pressure test them again because, well, they're pretty much junk otherwise, so I might as well give it a shot and see if I can't get something out of it. Um, but I think I have something of a method on this. I, I think in the future, if I make more of these things, get some more thermocouples, I am going to uh, uh, get a style that just uses uh, rubber insulation. And hopefully I don't have the same problems I do with this fiberglass shielding. Um, a friend of mine recommended actually taking the, the, the two wires. They're usually, you know, uh, insulated but, but, you know, sealed together the way two wires often are. And uh, pull them apart so I don't get any uh, gas leakage along the... Uh, the butt crack in between the two uh, two uh, insulated wires, um, but uh, I, th I think it's a su su uh, success. Um, the one failure was a um, see if I have it here, the three eight one I attempted, and what happened was the larger tubing. The uh, I didn't take measures to prevent epoxy from running down along the wire and into the fitting, and that's exactly what happened. And I'm pretty upset about that. I ruined that thing. So um, that thermocouple is, is done for. It's all coated on the tip with epoxy. But uh, in the meantime, uh, tomorrow I'll find out if I have three of these things, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, possibly just put it back together with those three and not have a suction superheat right away. And uh, as soon as I can either get another fitting or braise myself a tea, 
I'm going to uh, go ahead and make my suction uh, suction one because that's actually the one of the ones I'm most interested in. But I'm trying to uh, uh, get better temperature reading so I can uh, more easily calculate enthalpy as it changes throughout the system. So anyway, uh, if anybody has any ideas on how to directly uh, uh, seal a thermal couple inside of like a copper piece of tubing or a brass fitting, you know, do comment please because uh, I haven't found too much out there and um, the fact that this thing's holding over 300 PSI, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, uh, although it does require a good, good amount of epoxy. I could probably make one in about a half an hour or 40 minutes now. It's not too bad. Uh, the, these have been quite a disaster, but uh, we'll see how they, uh, see how they turn out tomorrow. So, anyway.